Hey guys, uh, this tutorial is about securing REST API with OAuth 2 using technologies such as Spring Boot, Spring Security, Spring OAuth, Spring JPA, and H2 Database. Uh, I didn't find any tutorials yet on YouTube that uh, helped out with such problem. We will try and solve this in this video. Uh, oh, this is a brief image, explanatory image that um, explains how the OAuth abstract protocol flow works. It's about an application client and the resource owner and the authorization server and resource server. We are going to configure with Spring this authorization server and the resource server. The application client, once it has obtained an authorization grant from the resource owner, is going to send an authorization grant to the authorization server that is going to respond with this access token. The access token can then be used to communicate with the resource server and obtain protected resources. Let's get started. Let's dive straight into the project from in IntelliJ IDEA. I'm going to provide on GitHub all the sources you need to get started. The first thing I did is just create a couple of entities which are the user entity and the role entity. This is pretty standard Spring uh, entities, nothing complicated. You can understand the code just by reading it. We have fields such as ID, username and password and a one-to-many association with the roles constructors and getters and setter methods methods and then we have an entity role which has an id and a name then we have the user repo which uh, extends the jpa repo and i created this find by username method that of course will um, allow us to obtain a user passing the user username provided it is unique and then a simple controller where I mapped a couple of get mapping. Uh, we have a home which returns a string of hello and a private get mapping where, uh, where it returns a string private. Then we have the demo application which simply uh, runs the spring application. The first thing I'm going to show you is how this works right now. So on IntelliJ, I'm going to start a Spring application. And you can see that it's starting right here on the bottom. Opening a new. Going on localhost 8080 on Chrome, as you can see right here, is going to prompt us to insert a username and a password. So right now the username is user, default user, and um, the password you can read it on the spring logs down here and you can copy this, paste them right up here, and there you have hello. If I go on slash private you have a private area. So right now, both hello and private are accessed by simply logging in with the uh, from the alert window provided by Spring Security and with the user user and password, the one that you can read on the logs. So if we check out our presentation from before, you can clearly see that we need to configure configure both the authorization server and the resource server. Let's start with the authorization server. Let's jump into IntelliJ IDEA. Let's create a new Java class and call this authorization server config. This class is going to extend an authorization server configurer adapter. To help us out, we are going to read on the Spring documentation, official one, 
how to configure the server configuration. So you can read here, as you configure the authorization server, you have to consider the grant type that the client is to use to obtain an access token from the end user. For example, authorization code, user credential, or refresh token. Um, let's jump right here. It says the enable authorization server annotation is used to configure the OAuth 2.0 authorization server mechanism together with any beans that implement authorization server configure and there is a handy adapter implementation with empty methods the following features are delegated to separate separate configures that are created by spring and passed into the authorization server configure so going back to intellij idea what i did is just to extend this authorization server configure adapter as you can see, it implements the authorization server configurer interface. We are going to annotate this with both configuration and enable authorization server. Once we are done with this, we will need to override three methods. The three methods we have to override are the configure methods. So, if you press Alt Insert on IntelliJ IDEA, you're going to select Override Methods, and we're going to select all of these three configure methods and override them. Let's start by configuring the Authorization Server Security Configure. Reading up on the Spring documentation, you can read Authorization Server Security Configure defines the security constraints on the token endpoint. So what we want to do is the following. We're going to select Security, check token access, and select the token access that you prefer. In this case, we're going to select is authenticated. That is going to return true if the user is not anonymous. You can check up these things just by Googling is authenticated Spring and go under official Spring security uh, documentation. As you can read up here, is authenticated returns true if the user is not anonymous. And there you go. That's why we plugged in is authenticated right there. Let's keep going by configuring the clients. As you can read up on the Spring documentation, Clients Details Service Configurer is a configurer that defines the Client Details service. Client details can be initialized or you can just refer to an existing store. So, what we're going to do is to configure the client details as written over here. Um, we're going to select, we're going to have to configure a client ID, a client secret, the scope, the authorized grant types, and the authorities. Also, you can select implementations with JDBC or, uh, as you can read up here, um, the client details service configurer. Uh, can be used to define an in-memory or JDBC implementation of the client details service. In this case, I'm going to use an in-memory configuration. So, let's do this right now. Jumping right here, you can select the following. You're going to say clients in-memory with client. So, we're going to plug in a client ID such as my trusted client. After this, we're going to select the authorized grant types, which are going to be client credentials and password. After this, the authorities, they're going to be role client and role trusted client. Now the scopes are going to be read, write and trust. Resource IDs. OAuth to resource and access token validity seconds is how long is this token gonna be valid for? Let's just select a number such as 500 seconds or maybe 5000 
however you want. And secret is going to be the secret. I'm going to just plug in secret for commodity reasons. For more information about all of those, you can refer to the official Spring documentation that I will provide on the description of such video. Now, let's configure the endpoints. Reading up on the documentation once again, you can read that authorization server endpoints configurer defines the authorization and token endpoints and the token services. So what we need to do is simply enough to endpoints and the authentication manager is going to be set up as our authentication manager. Right now, we do not have such field, so let's create it and auto wire it. And there you have it. The class authorization server configuration is now completely configured and ready to go. Let us now configure the resource server. So we're going to create a new Java class resource server configuration and go straight to the spring documentation once again. There you go, resource server configuration. A resource server can be the same as the authorization server or a separate application, serves resources that are protected by the token OAuth2. Spring OAuth provides a Spring Security Authentication filter that implements this protection. You can switch it on with enable resource server on a configuration class and configure it as necessary using a resource server configurer. So, easily enough, the first thing we're going to do is annotate our class with both this and this. And afterwards, we will have to use the resource server configurer as follows. Let's go straight to IntelliJ IDEA. Let's configure this as configuration and enable resource server as Spring told us. Spring documentation told us. After this, we're going to extend this with a resource server configurer adapter. I'm going to override the methods. I'm going to override HTTP security and do the following. Um, HTTP uh, authorized requests. And I'm going to do the following. The, the, um, the path slash is going to be a permit all pa uh, path. So all the users, authenticated, anonymous, whatever, are going to be able to see this page. But for the, the, the path private and any um, similar path that goes private slash, we are going to use the authenticated method. This way, we're going to tell only the people, the users that are actually authenticated, will be able to see this private area. Having now configured the resource server, we can go straight and configure the authentication manager. Reading up real quick on the Spring documentation, we can read that the password grant type is not supported by default. By default, all grant types are supported except password. So to switch it on, we have to inject an authentication manager, which we indeed did. But what we need to do now is to make sure that the user detail service of such authentication manager is the one we provide. So to do that, go on the demo application where your method, uh, your main method resides and let's do this. So what we're going to do is public void authentication manager and pass an authentication manager builder that we're going to pack name builder and the user repo repo. We're going to outwire this and we need to configure this. So to do that fairly easily, we're going to do builder user details service and we need to provide a user details service. So to do this, we're going to do new 
user details service. Uh, we need this right here. We're going to uh, add exception. And we're going to say repo find by username s. So as you can see, the new user details service is uh, we need to override the load by user by username. And I'm just trying to uh, find by username with our repo that we built before. But here IntelliJ is saying we require a user details and you're providing me with a user. And this is not what we want. We need a user details. So what we need to do is to wrap this user with a user details implementation that we're going to do right now. So what we need to do fairly simply is to wrap this with something along the lines of new custom user details and wrap this like so. Now we can create a class which returns a customer user details and implements user details. See how IntelliJ IDEA already did this for me. It implements the interface user details and we can pass a get uh, a, a user object. So what we need to do, the first thing is going to implement the methods that are required. So what we need is to set up getters for authorities, password, username, and set up a few of those things such as account expir expiration, account locking, etc, etc. For the sake of brevity, I'm just going to set those to true. So the it's by default enable are not expired. You can fix those as you like. Uh, but I'm going to just do string username. I'm going to make them private. Private string username. Private string password. And collection of extends um, uh, grant of, granted authority. And we're going to get something like authorities. So uh, we're going to select authorities, get password, password, and get username, return the username. And there we go. Now we need to build our object. Uh, we're going to select by username, get username, and it's going to be equal to the, this username. This Password is going to be equal to by username get password, and this authorities is going to be equal to. Uh, I cannot do authorities because all I have here is get roles, so this is going to complain because the types are incompatible. So we have to loop through this and fix it. To do this, we'll do something along the lines of for role role within uh oops for role role uh within username get roles get oh by username my bad by username get roles uh we're gonna do um we're gonna create an a, a list of granted authority and we're gonna call this outs equals new array list and role actually offs add uh, what we're gonna add a new simple granted authority starting from the role name and there we go we could make sure that um, the names are actually uh, not duplicated so we could do something along the lines of to uppercase uh, to fix this. And now uh, we can do this. There we go. And we're pretty much done with this class. Going back to the main demo application, we can see that the error disappeared. Just to make IntelliJ happy, we can transform this to a lambda expression, which is much cleaner um, and once we are done we can restart our server the server will start 
as you can see down here on the bottom and let's go back to Chrome. If we try and access localhost 8080, we have hello. What if we try and access private? We have full authentication is required to access this resource. So this is actually working as expected. But what we can do is try and make this work with a postman which is a Chrome extension which I suggest to download because it's really useful to debug um, a lot of things. I'm going to launch Postman. I have already done a bunch of those things so it is already configured as expected. What you need to do though, I'm going to show you uh, real quick. Let's try and go on localhost 8080 and send a simple GET request. We have hello, as expected. What if we try and to go on private? As expected, we have unauthorized and the error description is full authentication is required to access this resource. So let's get an authorization like so. We're gonna do, go on localhost 8080, OAuth, token, grant type password, username user, and password user. But we didn't configure a user yet. We'll do this now. So let's do this. Um, go on uh, demo application and uh, Before actually doing all of this, we can do this. Uh, repo, actually, if repo count is equal to zero, we're going to create a new user. So repo save new user. I'm going to call this user, user, and uh, give this a couple of authorizations such as user, new role, user, a couple of uh, roles, new role user and new role actuator and there we go now we have our user by default uh, i'm going to refresh this uh, i'm going to refresh the server and go back to postman there we go now that we have set up a user with username user and password user we have to make sure that you select type basic alpha right here and username my trusted client and password secret. These are the ones that we configured before on the authorization server configuration, if you recall. This is with client, my trusted client, F secret, secret. Go back in Postman and try to send the post request. As you can see, we have an access token, which is the following. We have to copy this to use it on the private area. Let's go back on, pri on uh, let's go on back on private area, but this time we are gonna attach to the URL the access token that we just copied out. So we're gonna do access token a0 af etc etc and send the get request. And this time, as you can see, you have private. So you just went in the private area as a logged in user with credentials that were saved on the um, H2 database. You can do all kind of stuff now. You can go back on the home control uh, on the demo application and as you can see I just did a brutal repo save here but you can create a registration form, you can create a registration endpoint, whatever you want. It's up to you and this is just an introductory tutorial to help you out with JPA and off. Thank you for watching and have a good one.